What's going on guys, it's MichaelMGF, and today I am finally not just doing another video, but I'm doing this video, the Captain America Civil War spin-off showcase featuring Crossbones, Agent 13, and Zemo. This was supposed to be out two weeks ago. I, I got so carried away with X-Men Apocalypse minifigures, and then my iMac broke for a week, and I was like, well, uh... Three weeks, I guess, is gonna have to do because uh, this was the best I could do. And uh, yeah, this video is so beyond late because I wanted this done by the end of May, but then the figures were not finished by then. It was gonna be a week late as it turned out. And then all that stuff happened and uh, here we are. So yeah, um, I do wanna make sure you guys don't get the wrong idea about this video though. I've already moved on to X-Men Apocalypse minifigures, like I said, and Suicide Squad really soon here. So I'm not going back to do any more Civil War minifigures. These figures were done two weeks ago, so don't expect Giant Man or General Ross or Everett Ross, even though I don't really know why anyone ever wanted me to make minifigures of those two. But regardless, I'm putting a lid on Civil War. These are the last minifigures that I have planned for Civil War, and I, I am moving on from here. This is it. So just want to make that clear. But yeah, Okay, let's get started. All right, so kicking this off with Crossbones, of course, I was super excited to see him in the movie, especially following the Winter Soldier. And uh, then the set photos came out, like I said, uh, last year, and we saw how awesome he was gonna look. And then fast forward to May of this year, a year later, and uh, we saw the movie, not only was his appearance brief, but he does something so out of left field, something that I thought was kind of out of character for Brock Rumlow, but still definitely surprising to say the least. And uh, certainly not enough to stop me from wanting to make his badass costume into a Lego minifigure, though. And uh, that's what I did here, of course. And I guess we'll go ahead and I'll, st I'll start off by saying all three minifigures in this showcase, guys, are fully 100% hand-painted. Sometimes I'll use a printed face here and there or uh, some other printed elements. But uh, in this case, all three minifigures in this showcase, guys, are fully 100% hand-painted. So just to get that out of the way. And so, the helmet. We'll start off by saying the helmet is a really, uh, really heavily modified Ultron helmet and repurposed into being crossbones by sanding off the rims that were on the side, uh, filling that in by sculpting over like the gap here and then the creases on the sides that were there and then sanding all of that over to make sure it was smooth and uh, thick layers of paint on top of that. It was just a really time consuming process, one that I did not know would work and then thankfully it did and it really worked out in this minifigure's favor. Uh, one thing about the Ultron helmet though and those two pieces, because if you, if you don't have an Ultron minifigure, the Ultron helmet is made up of two separate pieces and obviously now those are two th those two pieces have been joined together for this helmet um they encase um, the minifigure's head inside and uh from the get-go like when i started with this minifigure i knew that the helmet was going to be sealed inside or the head was going to be sealed inside and there would be nothing i could do about it um so that was just something i knew going in but of course that came with the challenge of having to paint the eyes onto the head after it had already been sealed inside the two helmet pieces and so you know actually painting inside these two little gaps was definitely really challenging and tedious and uh, I ended up working out really well um, but I definitely prefer to paint eyes onto a minifigure while I have the head you know in, in my hand rather than inside a helmet so um, yeah there was that and then of course you know iconic to crossbones look in the movie um, I've got the like misted uh, like faded effect of the uh, like the, the skull uh, on the front of his helmet and that was uh, really uh, actually kind of difficult to get right uh, to make sure I use the right amount of white and gray and balancing all of that and then the markings right around here um, for the nose and like the vents there and then of course like the actual like crossbone symbol on his chest and uh, the vest is actually a minifig cat uh, I have no idea which minifig cat vest it was I totally forgot um, but it was actually pretty flat to begin with and it had just like three pounds on the bottom and I sanded all of those off and uh, then I went ahead and painted on all the detail that you see here and then of course using the same rubbery material that I use on a lot of minifigures this flexible stuff I uh, made the pouches that you see here and then these three in the middle and then the magazine right here is actually a uh, brick arms magazine from a weapon I don't have the foggiest clue uh, which which one it was but yeah so uh, speaking of this rubbery material once again I just want to point out that I used it on uh, these little bits that you see surrounding these extra bullets on his shoulder by the way 
but those are actually uh, tiny tactical glow sticks that I repurposed to look like those extra bullets. Or I guess I should probably say extra rounds probably sounds better. Um, but yeah, and then I use them here as well uh, to surrounding like the uh, tiny tactical magazine that I glued on uh, this shoulder here. So this magazine was from Brick Arms and then uh, this one was from, this mag was from uh, Tiny Tactical. So yeah, there's that. And of course, all of it fully painted uh, for the minifigure. And so um, now the gauntlets, of course, the gauntlets, man. Okay, these, I, I guess I'll go ahead and remove the helmet and the vest just to keep, you know, the magazines that I have glued on and everything safe. Um, these are actually super heavy, heavily modified uh, Breakthrough Army Iron Man gauntlets. And uh, what I did was I took the minifigure hand, I glued it in there, and then I took some flexible metal Christmas wire and uh, I pretty much cut and adjusted and bent each one to perfectly fit on the gauntlet and then onto the piece that I have glued to the bottom of each hand. And then one other thing that I did is you might notice the hand uh, in the middle there is filled in. I took some uh, Lego, some, some minifigure rods and then I cut them up to glue them in and I smoothed it over sanding. I mean, this was really time consuming. Honestly, making these gauntlets might have been more time consuming than doing the helmet, but uh, it really was worth it. It really did pay off. And honestly, these pieces uh, turned out super sweet and they're really efficient because like I said, you might, like I said, that you know, they're one big piece all fully painted and I'm really happy with the way they turned out. And uh, even though they were honestly barely used in the movie, they're still really cool on this minifigure that I, uh, that I made here. So yeah, then uh, I guess we'll go ahead and put the vest back on and the helmet so he looks a bit more complete. The legs are fully posable still, of course, even with all the camo that I have painted on them and the straps and everything, all my minifigures legs are always fully posable. That's something I never forget to do, of course. Um, and then the, uh, the uh, knee pads that you see on crossbones here are made with the same exact material and uh, they turned out looking pretty sweet and they have all their respective detail painted on them and uh, so yeah there's that and then if we take a look at uh, the holster on uh, his leg here his right leg that is also made out of the same shit and uh, it turned out pretty sweet having its own set of uh, paint apps you know outlines and the straps connecting to it and all that stuff and then of course the detail on his legs does wrap around all four sides of uh, each leg and uh, so there's that and this minifigure man he was time consuming I'm but I'm really happy with the way he turned out definitely one of the best Civil War minifigures I made and I think he turned out better than I was expecting here's a look at his back which was actually based 100% off of the Hot Toys crossbones that they brought to a convention even though they said they still have yet to uh, officially uh, reveal it but uh, yeah guys this is my portrayal of crossbones as he appeared in Captain America Civil War I cannot believe I finally got the chance to make this minifigure this is one I was really looking forward forward to ever since uh, he was announced to be in the movie before they even started shooting. So yeah. Okay. There you go, guys. Rumlo. Moving on. Next up, our main antagonist of Civil War, played by Daniel Brühl, of course, Zemo. This figure Seriously, was not going to happen. This video was just going to be Crossbones and Agent 13. And then, I think it was the second time I saw Civil War, I thought back to Batman v Superman when I was making Lex Luthor, and I was like, holy crap, that that reject head that I never used on that for that minifigure would be perfect for a Zemo minifig. And I wasn't going to make him, I honestly, but then I thought of that head, and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, please tell me I did not scrap that head. And then I found it, it was still intact, I painted a stubble on it, and uh, I was like, well, gotta make the rest of him now, and I, I've made Zemo. Now, uh, here's the issue. Reference. You'd think, I mean, you know, the, the painting the stubble, that was super time consuming and tedious, making the book, you know, sure, but reference, man, I think, because of the lack of reference, there's a chance I might have taken two outfits that he wore in the movie and then joined them together for what you see here. To be honest, I don't even know if he has dark brown pants in the movie. I'm pretty sure he does, but regardless, it's what looked best on the minifigure. So, yeah, um, there's that. Now, uh, the, the, the uh, design that I painted on the torso, basic jacket design, buttons, you know, the, you got the, the, the pockets and you have the, the shirt underneath, which does have like a plaid pattern uh, painted around that and the neck area there, which turns out, which turned out pretty cool, zipper in the center. Um, so, I mean, the torso turned out great and uh, he does have a pair of tiny tactical uh, cuffs on his wrist there. And then uh, you got some basic detail on the back of his torso, some wrinkles in his clothing, nothing major. Um, and then the legs, as I was mentioning earlier, the dark 
brown pants. I don't know what it is, man. It might seem excessive to some of you guys, but I absolutely love painting this design onto minifigures whose legs simply are just basic pairs of pants because uh, it just looks really good. I don't know what it is about the Death Star Trooper leg design that I love so much. It's just when you have a minifigure that, you know, whose legs you could just leave blank because they just have a basic pair of pants, right? This design just brings out so much detail in what would otherwise be an under-detailed minifigure, and that's why I always use this design, and I honestly don't plan on stopping anytime soon for minifigures that have, uh, you know, just standard pants for their legs, so, uh, yeah, um, there's that, and then he does have, um, some just, uh, I mean, the shoes are really just not, you know, much, they're just, uh, basic, uh, black shoes wrapping around all four sides of the minifigure's, uh, legs there, and I didn't really feel like any curves on the front, like in the toe area was really nasty. Necessary. I thought the minifigure, you know, looks just fine the way he is. And he didn't really need that extra detail on the toe area there um, for each leg. So, uh, yeah. Now, uh, the book. Okay, the book, um, the Winter Soldier activation book. This, um... Let me just start off by saying, at first, I was going to use, like, one of the books that I think debuted in the Harry Potter sets, maybe? One of those, like, really cool, like, opening uh, minifigure books, and uh, as you might have just uh, seen there, my minifigure is already, like, kind of jumping ahead of me. Um, but this book is uh, actually made of construction paper. And as uh, simplistic and as like basic as that might sound, I originally was going to use one of Lego's books, but then I got it in the mail from a Brickling seller, only to realize it was over half the size of Zemo and of of all minifigures. I'm like. Damn it, that would have that would have been really great if it was actually to scale with minifigures, but unfortunately they are not, and so I settled for this. And uh, could I have figured out a better design for the book that is not construction paper uh, tacked onto the minifigure's hand? I mean, maybe, but then I'm like, should I linger on this book design or should I finish these figures, get these, these figures showcased, move on to X-Men and Suicide Squad, or should I just keep working on this damn book? So... I settled for the construction paper. I mean, it still opens. It's got the star painted on. I mean, it does have the texture um, that we saw on it in the movie. That's all painted, the weathered effect. And I mean, it still looks really great on the minifigure um, as long as it doesn't fall out of his hand. So I mean, as uh, simplistic and as underwhelming as that might seem, guys, at least it, it's there. At least it's still there to top off the minifigure because, man, I really think he would have been pretty lame without it, even as good, you know, even with the super good looking face because honestly, I think this is one of the best faces that I painted in a while. I think the likeness turned out to be really spot on. But uh, yeah, guys, I loved Zemo as a villain. I don't know what people were talking about. Even without the costume, I thought Daniel Brühl was super great uh, as as the character. So yeah, that is it for Zemo, though. A pretty simplistic minifigure that I still think turned out pretty sweet. And finally, Agent 13, Sharon Carter. This figure in the Lego set was... Okay, and uh, unfortunately though, Lego based their minifigure off of the concept art that was provided for Agent 13, and I've seen it before where she has like a black jacket on that she never actually does wear in the movie, so like pretty much not only the minifigure in, in Lego's in Lego Superhero Airport battle set, but I mean even action figures too of Agent 13 from Civil War are all inaccurate due to that concept art of her that ended up not being used, and uh, so I wanted to make my own Agent 13 minifigure, and I think this turned out looking really sweet, and it's a really great great complimentary like piece to the rest of the entire wave of Civil War minifigures that I made. She just fits right in. Um, so yeah, uh, the hairpiece, I guess we'll start off with that. The hairpiece is from the Trend Setter minifigure from like Lego minifigures series 10. It was this figure. I don't remember when that series was released. It must have been four or five years ago. Um, so yeah, I've used the hairpiece several times ever since. And the uh, blonde hair color that you see on it is a uh, variety of several different colors mixed together. And I think I actually took my Fantastic Four Invisible Woman hair color. It and I used that on Black Canary too for Arrow. Um, I took that color and then I lightened it a little bit. I took like part of that paint out of that bottle and then I lightened it in for this minifigure and I think it really worked out. Um, so yeah, there's that. And if we go ahead and remove the hairpiece now to give you a better look at the head, you'll notice that the head is fully painted. Like I said, all three minifigures in this showcase are fully painted. And uh, the face at first, I had a really straight, 
and like emotionless facial expression on her and I thought that that would look okay and then I tried making a preview photo with it and I was like okay it looks really awkward having Agent 13 attempt to like attack Bucky and she's just got a totally straight face like she's bored out of her mind so I, I made sure to uh, change that and I redid the eyes and the eyebrows to go for a more aggressive facial expression and I definitely think it got me a lot closer to Emily Van Camp's likeness so that was definitely that was definitely worked out in favor for this minifigure and then also uh, featuring an area like curved torso that is fully painted painted as well. You'll notice that I have her vest and all of its respective detail painted on there and uh, getting that pattern. Like this is made up of dark gray for like the grid, like the, the square pattern, I suppose, like underneath the pockets and everything. And then the black detailing the pockets and you know, all this stuff went on top of that. And uh, yeah, it was definitely time consuming to make sure I got that pattern underneath right and uh, clean as possible. Um, and then uh, it definitely looks kind of overcrowded at first, but uh, the more I, I looked at the torso and you know, it is accurate, the more it grew on me. Um, so yeah, then the back uh, continues that same trend of uh, the, the, the same like square pattern and it uh, there really isn't as much detail on the back of her vest. Trust me, I checked. I, I paused at a few uh, shots while she was fighting Bucky during that one sequence uh, in Civil War that Marvel actually released as a clip. Um, so yeah, there's that and we'll just go ahead and put the hair piece back on. Now you'll notice that her sleeves do cover about half of her arms and uh, that is that was totally on purpose because that's how her sleeves are in Civil War and you'll notice that I do have some 3D cuffs at the, at the very bottom bottom uh, ends of each of each sleeve like I do all the time when I make sleeves on minifigures. She features a tiny tactical watch with the center of it painted in silver and I really got to get another one of those because I think I'm going to need one for Professor X and I think this is the only one I have and uh, small fun fact, I, I, there's a chance I may or may not have taken this off of my Alexei Slitsevich from Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, so there's that and then yeah, the legs you'll notice again, same Death Star Trooper leg design that I used on Zemo and countless other minifigures figures that have just standard, you know, pants. And uh, in, in Sharon's case, she has jeans and there really wouldn't have been a lot for me to paint on. So I just kind of took some detail from that Death Star Trooper like design and I uh, took it over and, you know, brought, carried it over onto this minifigure. And uh, say what you will about how excessive you might think it is. But personally, I really like the design and uh, that's why I uh, used it on two minifigures in one showcase. So yeah, then her boots, you'll notice, are pretty standard. They have like the, the, the uh, like metallic rims on the bottom. And then you'll notice that uh, I do have the laces painted on. And uh, the laces, the, the design that I've done several times before. I think the first time I did it might have been like my first, of, like my uh, Captain America from the Winter Soldier. Um, and I've done this design ever since on minifigures that have laces like that. And of course, the boots do wrap around all four sides of each leg. And uh, yeah. So aside from that, that's really it for Agent 13 and all the minifigures in the Captain America Civil War spinoff showcase, guys. And I'm really happy with all the way, you know, the way all three of these turned out. I know I've said that like countless times in this video, but hey man, I'm a customizer who's satisfied with his work. And uh, yeah, but let me know what you think down in the comments. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. When you gotta go, you gotta go. He has a bomb. Oh shit. Thank God you can read minds. I can't imagine what the UN would have done if anything happened to the Wakandans that are meeting in that building. Damn it. Okay, guys, and there you go. The spinoff showcase for Captain America Civil War. Three weeks late. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this showcase video. If you did, be sure to let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion on any of these minifigures down in the comments. Or maybe even if you found yourself inspired to make your own minifigures from Captain America Civil War, let me know. Always means a lot, guys. But... I got to tell you right now, just being honest, I feel like I have been plastered to a wall and that wall being Captain America Civil War because I had these figures done and sitting on my desk for the past two weeks, just like not showcased. I felt like part of me was still attached to Civil War, but now that this video is uploaded and done, I can move on to the rest of 2016. The rest of the year awaits. Brick Fair is in a month. I got started on X-Men Apocalypse minifigures and I'm getting started on Suicide Squad minifigures. This is like all happening and thankfully as much as I loved Civil War and as much as I loved finally making all of these Civil War minifigures 
it is just such a relief, man, to finally be able to move on and uh, put it behind me. So, yeah. But aside from that, guys, you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Links to all three of those are always down in the description below. And I seriously recommend that you do because uh, the rate of videos this year has really not been as consistent as previous years. And there have not been as a lot of reviews, as you might have noticed. Barely any at all. Uh, it's mostly just been showcases because there are just so many minifigures to make this year. And you will see them all first over on those platforms, as I said, linked below. I've already posted a preview of Mystique, Cyclops, Quicksilver, all of that stuff that hasn't made it over here yet and won't for a while is already over there. So seriously, I'm not just bullshitting you. It's some pretty cool stuff, man. Anyway, I'm going to go and uh, hopefully my next video will be, uh, you know, like sooner than three weeks um, from now. So anyway, that's it. I'm going to go. Okay. Bye. What's going on, guys? This is like, blah, 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 blah. like skull mask of mask up mask effect. Damn it! Long anticipated. It's not really long anticipated. The movie came out two months ago. No one really cares anymore. Oh, uh, yeah, there's that, and I did make sure to. The, 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 damn it! Agent thirteen, and is she really Agent thirteen, or is she just Sharon Carter now? Probably just Sharon Carter. I don't know. I don't think you understand what the Accords will oh, do. I understand fully, and we cannot allow any more enhanced. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I'm here to question James Butch and then Barnes. Dr. Broussard is already inside. Uh, well, that's me. Well then, hey, who the hell are you? Shit. Well, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, yeah, words, they don't function, yeah. But I'm like, holy, there's a train in the background. When you gotta go, you got Hell Hydra. What? Seriously, was not gonna make this video figure. I was absolutely going to make this video raw. Uh, looking, honestly, I'm done.